Welcome to the Magic Breath. I'm so excited to share about the Magic Square. It is really just um, a framework, right, that keeps on growing. It is based on numbers. It is based on uh, math, right? So it's really very practical to use. And then you can take it where in any direction that, that you want to take it. You can use it in your asana practice to organize a posture, to organize where you put your hands in downward facing dog. You can use it in your meditation to organize how you travel inside of yourself to organize your mind. You can use it in breath work, which is what we're going to do today, right? To have a nice routing to go through the magic square. And of course, you can use it to create a trip, a journey, you, uh, like a, a travel plan. You can use it to organize a business plan, right? It is so adaptable to anything because it is archetypal. It is using numbers. It's using numbers from one to nine. No one can argue that there are more or less numbers, right? Like this is it. We have zero to nine, right? And this is it. And everything is constructed around these, uh, these numbers. And each number has an archetype. So we're going to go, it's an introduction today, right? This whole thing can be a three-hour workshop, which will be offered at some point. But for today, it's really like an introduction. We're going to scratch the surface. For some of you who know it already, it's really nice to hear it, to hear it again. You will hear something else. And then if you have any insights, any questions, during the, during the presentation, during the practice, let me know. We're gonna start with a little bit of uh, screen share so that I can explain to you theoretically what it is. And then we're gonna sit and experience it inside of the body through pranayama, which is uh, breath work, right? So um, let's start to talk a little bit about the Katona Yoga, right? So it is, a Taoist exploration of yoga. Most yoga is based on uh, Hinduism, right? And the Indian narrative, which is so wonderful. And we do use it. We do like we we include it in our uh, in in the in, in the way that we teach a class and all this. It's not like we negate the Indian and we just focus on the Chinese. But the focus in Katona is a little bit more about. Uh, it's really using the Taoist principles, which we, we will talk about in a little bit. It was developed by Naveen Mishan, a great teacher in upstate New York since the early 1980s. So it's been, um, it's been happening for a while, right? And it's been growing throughout the years. Um, it, um, it is a mix of Hatha yoga, right? With Taoist theory, Chinese medicine, sacred geometry, math, myth, and lots of metaphor. So this is really like an amalgamation of all of this inside of the practice, right? We call it a syncretic uh, practice, which means it is an amalgamation of so many different uh, religions, cultures, philosophies, and systems that come together to create something new, right? And it's not top down. It's not like there's a book and there's a method and this is the way it is and that's it. It's exactly the opposite of that. It is a set of frameworks and maps and theories that allow you to take them and to put them on top of your practice. So I know lots of people who use the Katona on top of their uh, bodywork practice, on top of their, uh, their Pilates practice. In psychotherapy, you can use it, right? There are so many, in, in cooking, you can use it, right, Cake? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, a lot of usage to it way beyond the yoga itself. It is a fun and functional framework designed to bring insight and to potentiate your personal well-being and also the communal well-being, like the personal practice and how this uh, works out in the grand scheme of things in the world. The three principles that we play with are first, there's always a yin and yang. There's always polarity. You live in a dimension where polarity is the name of the game, right? It's all about that, up, down, good, bad, uh, masculine, feminine, east, west, right? It's all about that, solar, lunar. But the thing is that you always have to remember that every polarity is mediated by a trinity. So every time you see two, if you put yourself in the middle, you're turning it into a trinity and then you start to mediate the polarity. And that's what we play with a lot in Katona Yoga. The second principle is that everything in the universe follows patterns or else, or else it falls apart. It cannot continue, it cannot sustain. So pattern is really 
the backbone of the universe, right? It is really the code for you to crack. Whenever you see a pattern in nature, whatever you see in pa a pattern in animal life or vegetal life or the seasons or the weather, try to follow it. Try to see what is it saying because you have it inside of you. It's the same patterns. It is the same cycles that go over and over just with different stories, with different metaphors, with different scales, right? You have the scale of the universe and then you have the scale of the weather around you and then you have the scale of the weather inside of you and the cycles of your life and the seasons that you're going through yourself. So pattern is a very important uh, aspect of our practice. And then the third principle is the principle of repetition, right? Because the pattern repeats itself. That's the whole goal of a pattern is that it comes and comes and comes. But the thing is, every time it repeats itself, it becomes more intelligent than the time before. So that instead of turning in circles, you can start to see that you're turning in a spiral that can move upward, right? So it is a pattern, but it is, it is becoming more and more intelligent. And the more you repeat something, the more you gain insight. Just like today, if that's the first time that you're listening to this, it, it will feel maybe a little bit too rigid or linear or like, wait, where is two, where is four? But then the more you do it, the more, the more you start to have insight, just like everything, right? So these are the three principles that we, um, that we play with. The magic square itself is very simple. It's a tic-tac-toe board, right? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's it, right? Two lines and two lines. These are the numbers in the magic square. It hasn't been created by Katona Yoga. It hasn't been created by Naveen Mishan. It has been created in a myth from like thousands of years ago in China. So it comes from the Lo Shu in China. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about it um, if, if we have time. But the, the most important thing is that you have all of these numbers that are organized in a certain way that if you add any line or any diagonal or any row or any column, it always adds up to 15. That's what makes it magical. 294 is 15, 753 is 15, 618, 276, 951, 458, right? 258, 456, all of these lines add up to 15. So five in the middle is really the, the, the principle that makes it magical because without the five, it will not add up to 15. If you change any number, it will not add up to 15, right? The only way for, for it to add up to 15 is that if you mirror it, right, the other way. So that principle has been used for centuries, right? This is how, what, what they use in Feng Shui. This is the, the same pattern that, that gives you the most, uh, the most efficient flow of energy in a house. So now here we use it to find the most efficient flow of energy inside of the body. It was discovered in the myth a long time ago. I think we'll talk about this another time because I just want to respect our one hour and 15 minutes and go through all of the program that we have, but you can read about it. It's called the Lo Shu. It was discovered on the, on the back of a turtle, right? And this is the code, right? And you can crack the code by having one at the bottom, two here, three here, four here, five here, and nine at the top. So what Naveen did, she took that and she, she, she flipped it so that you are the magic square. You are looking out. So, right, you are inside of it and you're looking out which means when you see the numbers like this, you see that two is on your top left on your screen, but actually two is your top right because you are inside of the magic square. So for you to understand this concept, and this is pretty important, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna show you here how if that's my tic-tac-toe board, oh, the cat uh, completely, <laughs> <laughs> right? The cat changed the structure of it. But that's the idea, right? So it's the tic-tac-toe board, five is in the middle, right? So my heart is five, it is in the middle of it. My right foot is uh, number six. My left foot is number eight. My perineum is number one at the bottom. Five is in the middle. Three is my left arm. Seven is my right arm. And then seven, five, three is 15. Right eye, it's two, you see? So the right eye, which was on your screen on the left, 
it's on my right because we're mirroring each other, right? That's the whole thing, right? So that's a very important concept to understand that you flip the magic square to put yourself in it. So you are the magic square. You're not looking at it. You're being looked at from above, right? And left eye is number four. Third eye is number nine because it's the achievement. It's everything. And five is always in the center of yourself, right? And we use this a lot in asana to organize a seat, to organize a posture. But of course, this is all things that we can cover another time. Any question about this so far? Okay. So do you see, do you see the square on your screen? Yeah, awesome, beautiful. So that's the magic square. Then I went through it very, um, uh, very quickly when I was showing it to you on, oops. Excuse me. Here we go. When I was showing to you on my body, right? So number one at the bottom is my perineum. It is the root at the bottom, right? We call it the third foot. Number two is at the top right, right? <laughs> it's the right eye. Number three is your left hand. If you see, there's a little ring on that hand because it's the hand that handles marriage. It's the hand that handles the heart, right? That's the left side. It's very lunar. It's on the left side. It's related to your heart, your feelings, your emotions. Number four is your left eye, same side, right? Number five is the center of your chest. Notice that every number is taking one of the three floors, right? So you start at the bottom, then you go to the top, then you go to the middle, then you go to the top, then you go to the middle, then you go to the bottom, right? So five is in the middle. It is the third hand, we call it, right? So right hand, left hand, third hand. It is really your sternum, your thymus gland, your immunity, your radiance, your soul, your spirit right in the middle. Uh, number six is your right foot. Number seven is your right hand. Number eight is your left foot. And then number nine is your third eye right at the top, right? And then you have all sorts of maps that you can look at. They're all open source. You can use them. You can post them. Just make sure that you um, you, uh, you mentioned, right, where it comes from, from Naveen and uh, Susan Fierro, the amazing illustrator. And they can be very complex, right? You can go really deep into all of these quadrants and what they mean. What is the third hand, right? It's half of the whole. What is the whole? Oh, it's number 10, right? There's all of these beautiful, beautiful uh, theories, right? And then just to go very quickly through them, one is the bottom, it's the perineum, it's landing inside of the body, right? It is the soul and containment. Just you can think of it like a drop of spirit coming down into existence and it starts, right? So it's really the perineum that begins you. It's not the sole of your foot. Your feet are like descending down from your pelvis, <laughs> right? You begin as a human being around your pelvic floor. If you cut your feet, you're still a complete human being without both feet, right? So that's the bottom of yourself. So this is number one in the body. Number two is your right eye. The right eye is related to your memories, to setting goals for yourself, because memories are always related to where you are going, right? And where you are going is always dictated by what, by what sorts of memories you allow yourself to marinate in. If you keep thinking about something that happened to you that is very, very unfortunate, the direction that you're going in life is a very unfortunate one. It's going to be tainted by that memory. If you remember a good memory from you meeting someone that you love five days ago, you have that push to push you forward into like a more potentiating, a more promising uh, um, future right so memory and goal setting are really related and they live in the right side of the magic square the top right side which in the body it is the right eye and the right side of the brain number three is your left hand it is your uh, the hand of the the heart right the left hand is the hand of the heart that's the one that handles your emotions your feelings your um your softness, your innocence, right? Your ignorance as well, because it's all about uh, lunar nature, right? It's not trained. Emotions, you cannot train them. I mean, you could, but that's the whole, right, Frank? <laughs> right? They, they are so strong. That's the thing. And they are lunar. 
right? You don't know when they come. There is a lunatism in them too, right? You can't really base a full, well thought decision on emotions, right? So that's the innocence of the left side, of the left hand, right? And um, for example, the, the left hand is also related to your ability to communicate what you have in your heart. How do you take out your feelings, your emotions, and push them out into the world? So it also has an ability, if you want to take it with Chinese medicine, to connect with your thyroid gland, right? With your throat chakra as well, if, you think, if, you, if you're playing with the, with the Indian narrative. So also the glands come into the magic square in a beautiful way. And that's another sort of layering that you can add on to the magic square. It has a very medical, it, it could be a medical framework as well. Four is your left eye, right? The left eye is your vision. Remember the right eye, which was number two, this one was memories, goal setting, which is very much about honing down on a very specific thing because it's a goal that you want to focus on. Four is your left eye. It is the eye that sees the big picture. So it's the opposite of the two, right? Remember the polarity, the yin and yang and everything, right? And that's why you have a third eye. It is the third, the trinity, the one that mediates how much big vision and how much focus and OCD you can be on this tiny little goal that you want to make so well, right? So four is all about the big vision, taking yourself out of yourself, seeing the big picture. It's on the left side, so it's lunar. Everything on your left is lunar. Everything on your right is solar. If you want to think of it in very like sexist uh, uh, terms, everything on your left side is masculine. Everything on your right side is feminine, right? And everything in the middle is really your soul, right? It doesn't have a gender. It doesn't have a, a polarity, right? It is everything and nothing at the same time. Five is the center of your chest. It's the center of the magic square. Without five, there's no magic. Without five, there's no magic square. Without you, there's no life. You, you, there's nothing because it's all you. So five is really the center of yourself. Finding center in our practice is all about playing with five, all about finding that place right in the middle, right? So the biggest mediator of all is number five. And it is your thymus gland in the middle, which is where your immunity resides, which is where your compassion uh, resides as well, right? Six is your right foot, right? Your right foot is the one that takes you out into the world. Notice that one, two, three, four, five, it's like, it's very internal. It's like, yeah, my vision, my, my heart, my feelings, my goals, everything that's very much about me, 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 me. Then you arrive at five, you occupy the center, and now you can go out into the world, <laughs> right? Like from five, you move from yin to yang. Now you're moving out into the world. Number six is sex. Number six is is fierceness. Number six is going out and mingling with people, communicating with others, right? Creating things, taking yourself out of your comfort zone. It's very paternal, right? It has lots of things that have to do with your right kidney as well, right? Because it's really the root of your right leg. Um, number seven is your right arm and your right side of the chest, which is really your liver on the right side. Your liver is all about taking you out into the world right? Remember, now you step out of yourself, you can go out into the world and start to shake other people's hands to make the deal, to sign the check, to make sure that everything can really start to move out, you can start to substantiate your visions, and not just think about these things, oh, I want to become this, I want to become that, great, prepare it, but then are you moving out? Are you learning the techniques to trust yourself in the world, to move out of yourself. That's all the job of the right hand. That's all the job of the liver on the right side. So the left hand handles the feelings, right? And the right hand handles the world. And then you are right in the middle, you're number five, right in the middle of this second polarity. Then eight is your left foot. Remember the six was your right foot. So right foot takes you out into the world. Eight is your left foot. The left foot brings you into yourself. It takes you back home, right? It is the foot that takes you into your, uh, that reconnects you to your roots. It reconnects you to the earth, to nature, to the simple things in life. It teaches you patience, right? It teaches you how to accept patterns, how to accept cycles, how to accept aging. 
it's all in the left foot, in the left leg. And this is usually the one that many, many people struggle a lot in understanding in the magic square. And lots of people struggle a lot with some aspect in their left side. Because remember, the left side is very lunar, right? It is ignorant. It is untrained, right? So, and the right side is very much about techniques and knowledge and like scholar, reading, podcast, doing, right? Giving lecture. This is what we're doing now. It's very right side, right? So eight is, uh, eight is that, right? That is really the maternal root, the one that takes you back home, the umbilical cord to the planet, if you want. And um, nine is the last number. It is the third eye right so nine is the achievement you have went through this whole process you reflected you um, you articulated you set a goal you saw the big vision you put yourself in the center of it you stepped out into the world you met the right people you made a deal with yourself you started doing it over and over again you went into the pattern of number eight and now you rise up to the third eye and now you achieve it right at the top which is really this, this connection to something bigger than you, right? To the universe, to the big mystery of life right above you. So that's really the opening to 10, which is the whole. 10 is your whole body together. It's like a circle that encirculates your whole magic square. So everything starts very linear, right? We started as a grid and you have these quadrants inside of them. And then eventually you want to turn it into a sphere so that you become radiant, so that you become spherical, right? So that you can start to bounce. So that if you get sick, you can pew, bounce back again very quickly, right? Because all of these practices are really mind, body, breath equally, right? And not just like, oh, we say it's mind, body, breath because it sounds good, but it's actually all asana or all like fitness or all breath work. It is really using everything. Like it, it is meditation, it is breath work, it is asana, it is all of these together, and then you can use them in, um, in life, in the world, right? You can use them to, like, I use the magic square to really organize everything, all of my businesses, right? All of my dreams, everything that I'm trying to do, right? I, wh wherever I feel stuck, I'm like, mm, where am I stuck? In three or four or five or six? Oh, maybe I'm stuck between six and seven. And guess what? Most probably, if I'm stuck at seven, I will realize that I have a pain or something happening with my right arm, right? So it's like the body and the mind are not just communicating together. They are the same. One you can see, the other you can feel. And that's it, right? So what, what I really love about this is that it, it gives us a, a map, a tool, um, um, a framework, right? So that we can start to gain our own insights about them. Right. And that's why they're very convoluted and they look very complex for you to go over and over again so that you can get more insight, just like you're reading a big atlas. Right. The only difference is that this atlas is the atlas of your body. It's the atlas of your life. It's the atlas of your psyche. Right. So um, that's what that's another map right that's another map if you see here you have 618 at the bottom 753 294 it's the same it is a magic square these numbers never change they are always the same but here for example we tell you that the first uh, do you see my mouse moving on the screen yeah awesome so 618 at the bottom is lunar it's your lunar floor right it is sex money uh, water and food right it's really at the bottom uh, 753, it's the center of your chest. This is your solar floor, right? It's all about doing. It's all about uh, learning, uh, talking, communicating, uh, cooking, uh, doing things, right? That is the floor of doing. The bottom floor is the floor of being. The third floor, which is 294 at the top, it is your stellar floor. So you have lunar, solar, and stellar. Stellar is all about your vision, right? It is your third floor. Um, it is also parallel to the three natures, right, in, in yoga, the three gunas, the three natures, right? It is just um, presented in a way that is more relatable and, and um, simpler, right, to understand that there's a solar, a lunar, and a stellar. But then also, you can't just take it very linear. It's like, oh, only the bottom is, is lunar, only the middle is solar, only the top is stellar, because remember, it's all yin and yang. Yin and yang are inside of each other. 
the mountain, when you see the, um, the sun uh, shedding the light on the mountain, the shadow and the light are, are part of the same. It is still the mountain. Right, so that's the same idea with the um, with the magic square. Is that yes, you have a lunar floor at the bottom. Yes, you have a solar floor in the middle. Yes, you have a stellar floor at the top. But guess what? Your right side, so two. Uh, I'm sorry, four, three. I'm sorry, two, seven, and six are solar. The whole right side is solar. The whole left side is lunar. So four, three, and eight is lunar. And the whole middle is stellar, right? So one, five, and nine, it's stellar right in the middle, right? Because it's really uh, bridging the polarity between the solar side on the right side. Remember, doing things on the right with the right hand and getting married and loving others and loving yourself on the left hand, right? Which is lunar. And the middle is stellar, right? And then to make it a little bit more complicated for you to go crazy, you have backside of the body, front side of the body, and the, and the body itself. The backside is your past. The front side is your future, your potential. And the body is the present, right in the middle. So the backside, which is the past, it's lunar, right? It is lunar. You cannot see it. It's lunar. It's behind you. The, the, the front side of the body right in front of you, it's solar. It's taking you forward towards the sun, towards the potential. And the body itself, the present moment is stellar, right? Because it's, it's now, right? It is this beautiful spark of presence in the middle, right? So that's it. And then you have all of these maps. What's beautiful about them is that they all follow the tic-tac-toe. <laughs> they all follow one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you can start to superimpose anything on top of these maps and, and start to play with it. So you can create, for example, if you see that person in the middle sitting in meditation, which will we'll be sitting in a little bit, right? Like this, you, you can see how he can be or she can be divided into these nine parts, just like I did it when I lied on my back, right? You can also start to travel from one to two to three to four to five to six to seven to eight to nine to create a route inside of you, right? So that you start to link all of these aspects of yourself, all of these polarities, right? Which is exactly what these numbers are always coming back through that center, right? That beautiful place of middle, right? So that's what we use in our practices. And this might start to make more sense now, especially if you came to my classes. In, in classes, we go very quickly through things, right? We are moving from a posture to the next. You might hear some of these principles, but there's not really time to sit and understand what are these numbers? Why are we talking about right and left that way? Why is the sun on the right and the moon on the left? You know, all of these stuff. So here you start to get a little bit more of this, um, these insights about it, right? And um, yeah, so one of the one of the goals also in, of the meditations that we do, because as I said before, especially the pranayama practice or the breathwork pra practice, for me, the katona way of doing it, it's so powerful because it has movement, it has breathwork, and it is a meditation. So it's really bringing all of the aspects of yoga together into one. Here you see the king of the mountain. If you're familiar with it, we do it many times, but you can do these meditations sitting down. I do it in yoga nidra sometimes, which has nothing to do with katona, but I bring the katona material to yoga nidra because that's what you do, right? You bring things and you cross-reference and that's when you start to get these really rich insights so that things are not linear right? So that it's not just a rigid system that, that someone created and like, this is it, you have to go through that way. So yeah, this is just to show you the wraps that we play with. You have the, the, uh, the wrap of the moment, which is effort and grace. It's from one to nine, up and down, fire rising and water descending, right? That's the wrap of the moment. It's like an orbit that you can orbit yourself with, inhaling up your back and exhaling down your front right? We do this very often. Then you have the wrap of the hour, the wrap of time, which is from dusk to dawn. 
inhaling from the left shoulder to the right shoulder in front of you and exhaling from the right shoulder to the left shoulder behind you. This is a second drop that will put you in the middle of time. The other one will put you in the middle of the moment, right? So that's the hour. So it keeps on growing, right? From the moment to the hour coming here, tw 12 hours in front of you, 12 hours behind you, seven to three, dusk to dawn, heart and liver, that one. The third wrap is the wrap of the day. Notice how we're moving from moment to hour to day, right? The wrap of the day is from six to four, which is from the right foot to your left eye. It's a diagonal from the right foot to your left eye, inhaling up your back, exhaling down your front, inhaling the night and exhaling the day, right? It is really how you wake up in the morning, your soul wakes up and then your spirit descends down at night, right? It's all of these beautiful, uh, beautiful wraps here. Imagine how you can start to weave and to insulate yourself instead of these orbits. The fourth wrap is the wrap of the seasons. Notice we went from the moment, one to nine, effort and grace, uh, one, to the hour, seven to three, to the day, six to four, waking and sleeping. And now we're moving from winter to summer, inhaling from, from your left foot towards your right eye for spring, holding it over your right eye for summer, exhaling down from the right eye to your left foot for autumn, and then holding it empty on the sole of your left foot for winter. And that's the wrap of the seasons, right? So that you have all of these wraps using the magic square all around you, right? If you don't know the number, it doesn't matter, right? At one point, you will, you will know exactly which number is where, if you're interested. But the beautiful thing is that you can do it just without even knowing, just like you connect your right eye to your left foot and you start to inhale and exhale. But then you want a narrative. You want something. Why am I doing it? That's when you start to use the seasons or the day or the hour of the, or the moment so that you can really start to weave a whole bubble, a whole atom, right? A whole beautiful cocoon around what? Five, which is in the middle. Without five, nothing of all of this is possible. It, it will always be polar. It will be either day or night. <laughs> it will be either, um, either waking or sleeping. It will be either winter or summer. When you put five in the middle, it is everything, right? It is really this beautiful uh, mediator of all polarities, okay? So that's the theory part of today, of the magic square. And... Um, do we have any questions before we move to the meditations and the pranayama? We will be using them, but you don't need to see them. It would, I wanted you to have a visual first so that you, you know what we're talking about, and then it, um, it can show up in the practice and give you more insights 